It said, We will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. So, I'm right now. I got right. I'm right. I'm good. Mm -hmm, let's do it. Um, so, let me open up some prayer. Hmm. Dear Lord Jesus, Heavenly Father, I come to you today with thanksgiving, God, and I come to you, Father God, so humble, Lord, and I ask you, Lord God, to help me to reach those, Father God, who are lost, who are stranded, who are confused, who struggle with the same things that I did. Father God, open up their minds and open up their hearts and open up their spirit, Father, to receive you, to receive this message, this word, this message, this to receive what you're going to do to them. Help them to open themselves up and to receive the truth. Lord God, because you are the truth and only you will set us free. And God bless the broken road that led me straight to you. Father God, I give you all the praise and I give you all the glory, Father. And I just pray that you will guide me, give me the strength, give me the confidence, give me the courage. Control my mouth, control my tongue. Lord God, that what I speak, it's you that speaks out of me. It's pleasing to your ears, Lord. Help me, God. Guide me. I need you. Love you and I trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm. Hmm. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> I am ready now. So anyway, my name is Angela. And, um, you know, I live the life of sin. Of denial of sin. And it was only by God's grace that I am free from that sin. I was a slave to that sin and didn't even know it, you know? Um, so the Lord is really pressing on me to tell you about my life. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so let's go ahead. I was three years old. Actually, no. Okay, let's rewind. Um, I have two older brothers, and they're, um, and I'm the youngest child. I'm the baby, the only girl, and um, my parents got divorced whenever I was three, and I don't really remember much of my childhood because my father was an alcoholic and um, and I don't remember him being around I just felt like abandoned by him and um, my mother was a single mom with three kids and she worked hard all the time and whenever I was Younger, I got molested, and um, I leaned on my brothers kind of for protection and for help, but they didn't know. You know, no, nobody knew. It's not something that every that you talk about, you know. 
Um, but I, I leaned on my, my brothers for help. And all they did was, you know, pick on me. Like, it was normal stuff I thought that brothers did. But my other friends at the time were real close with their brothers, you know. And mine just would call me Puka, because it was a nickname my dad called me. My dad called me Puka. My brothers would say, Puka, eh! and <laughs> or make fun of my legs, and that stuck with me for years. Um, they don't, they don't know the harm, the hurt, the hurt that it caused me. You know, I just stuck it down. So, when because I just felt abandoned from my family, I wanted to be loved. And I looked to be loved and accepted to younger, you know, to my friends, to school. This was like elementary school. Um, and so I leaned towards boys, towards girls, you know, any anybody that would show me attention, I gravitated to <laughs> and um, I became around the third I mean I really became opening up to you know because of uh, me being molested you know I was opened up to that sexual kind of sin in my life and so I started at a young age um, I, you know, so all through elementary school, it was like, I, I just gravitated to boys and to girls, you know, I didn't know what I wanted, and, um, but I grew up going to church, I did, I did, I did, my mom is very much a Christian, and, you know, she, so we grew up going to church, but, um, I, because of my hurt, because of the pain, because of feeling abandoned, because of feeling abused, I backed away, you know, and I wanted to, I gravitated to what gave me pleasure. And so, in middle school, um, well, through all this, I, I grew up doing cheerleading, and, um, and so I, I did cheerleading a lot of my life, and then, but in middle school, you know, I dibble dabbled with the, with the sex, not intercourse yet, not, you know, but, you know, um, and then, I met some friends that were, you know, I did cheerleading with, and I just, you know, we, we, I began using drugs. Um, I began sneaking alcohol, you know, sneaking alcohol here and there. Um, you know, I just, I wanted to feel accepted. And I remember whenever I was in eighth grade there was this guy that I was like in love with you know it was so it was love him it was puppy love you know um but I mean it was like it was it was it was four months which is <laughs> like a long time for me he was a football player and I was cheerleader and you know um But he ended up cheating on me, you know, with someone else, and I ain't gonna lie, you know, it pissed me off. It hurt. So I, um, before I continue, I just, I just gotta apologize for my mouth. I might, because I am getting into my um story my life story um i'm going to try to control my tongue but 
I might slip up. Which I have done really good, okay? I used to have the most foul mouth. If you don't believe me, ask my mom. <laughs> you can't do that. But anyway, I um I really did. I had a I had a bad, 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 bad mouth. So I've done really good thanks to God. He has he's done a miraculous work in me. And so that's why he wants me to do this video. So I just want to apologize ahead of time because I might slip. God forgive me. So anyway, I, um, you know, so I was really pissed off. And I, I turned to what I, just a minute, Scotty. I'm doing a video. No, 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 no. Okay. Sorry. Um, so anyway, I, um, bless his heart. Distractions! <laughs> um, thank you. So anyway, um, because this guy hurt me, and because of just all the pain I was going through, you know, always, you know, I just started re being rebellious. Like, I thought normal kids do, normal teenagers do, you know, be rebellious. And, um, I just started doing drugs. I started with alcohol and with weed, then it went up to pills. In ninth grade, I got into ecstasy. Um, cocaine, you know, I mean, it, it was just, that's when I realized that I like being high. I like to feel that I was escape. You know, I could escape. I could run. I didn't have to feel. I could run. I could run away. No. <laughs> okay. And so, I was very promiscuous. And I, um, I'm trying to remember. Lord, help me. So, you know, in school it was, I would get high before school, after school, and then it was, um, I met this guy, you know, I, I, first of all, I always had to have a boyfriend, I always had to have a guy, I always had to have somebody, you know, it was that wanting to be accepted type thing, and, you know, um, and it wasn't until I got into my real relationship that I met this guy. And we were together for four years. But at first he didn't want to get with me because I was, you know, doing drugs. He, he didn't want to be with anybody like that, you know. And um, so I told him that I quit. But the truth is I didn't. I just did it behind his back, um, and so I continued, um, and then it wasn't even a year we were together and he started abusing me, physical abuse, mental abuse, emotional, I was just like in hell, you know, I thought I deserved it, I thought this is how guys are supposed to treat women is that they're supposed to be abusive I mean my family was and it's, you know so I just I was off the chain <laughs> I thought I called myself wild for anything you know what